Hey everyone, it's Saturday evening, it's nearly 11.45, we're not far off, and uh, it's the 2nd of August. I'm just picking a few screws up before I lose them. Right, I thought you'd been up to quite a lot this week, especially today. I've been having a bit of a um, sort out of a few boxes and drawers and things. Um, but I've also started a PC project, um, which I'm going to do a video on, so it's sort of on hold for the minute. Uh, I dug this thermal tape case out from under my bed. It's been under there since last summer, something like that. Well, I never knew that. Um, <clears throat> I want to build... An XP gaming rig. Now I could use that motherboard because it actually gives me PCIe 2 AMD Opteron processor. I have no friggin idea what that is. Two gigabytes of DDR400 RAM. I have no idea why it's got PCIe 2 with DDR400 RAM. And a bunch of SAR connectors. But I don't want to go down that route. I've actually decided nope. What I'm going to do is use this board. Now, it is an Intel board. It has got DDR400. Um, I've already in the past looked for drivers for this but couldn't find it. But I'm going to use upgrade cards anyway. I've got a bunch of them here. Not that video card but I've got LAN card. I've got LAN cards in the box as well. I've got an audio card I can use. I can get the drivers for. So that's not a problem. Only because I want to go just for the P4 format sort of thing. Um, I'm going to save the fancier XP build to put into that case. So, anyway. <clears throat> I also need to decide what to do with those laptops because. Now that I bought a laptop from a car boot a couple of weeks ago for £60 to use at Mum's, it's been, been working great. I kind of, sort of, don't need the Advent, I don't need the Toshiba. Um, although I would like to keep the Advent just as a spare, so I might sell that Toshiba. My Samson I haven't got working yet, but I could throw that back on eBay as... Well, that's back on eBay, I didn't even get it from eBay, so I'm not going to throw it back on eBay, am I? I could throw that on eBay and, I don't know, probably sell for something like a tenner. Um, yeah. Oh, the HP computer I bought from the car boot as well. That does turn on, but um, it seems the operating system had a lot of viruses and bugs and issues. I uh, booted it up. It got to... Um, the um, user account screen and there was two user accounts one I couldn't access password protected the other one which was actually labeled test for some reason I could access but there's some sort of defragmenter program scanning program that automatically ran every time I went into it um, and started doing this scan of the hard drive and then came up with all these defects and said the hard hard drive was defective and whatnot, you know, fix now sort of thing. But as soon as that had finished, whatever you clicked on, didn't matter if it was the start menu icon or whatever it was, the computer would just lock up and the hard drive would just make this repeated clicking noise. You know, like it was reading, but doing the same process over and over. That's all it would do. But it wouldn't do that if you clicked on anything before the scan had finished. So I, what I wanted to do, um, well what I did, I took the hard drive out, put it on an external hard drive caddy, um, connected it to the laptop, <coughs> pardon me, connected it to the laptop, ran AVG antivirus, and that found a shitload of... Uh, viruses and all sorts. I didn't really look through the list. I was just like, quarantine it, clear it all. Put it back in the computer and now it just boot cycles. So, <laughs> it didn't work. It actually made it worse. I didn't think you could do that, but never mind. 
Um, so the only way I'm going to get the HP working is uh, to reinstall Windows XP. So got my um, spotlights in the way at the minute because uh, I was doing some um, filming for the Lego channel in here, so they like my studio lights. Um, I've got the Dell Dimension 4600 back in here, but I have stolen the video card and the two gigabytes of RAM out of that. That's what's in one of the motherboards through there. Because um, I want to put that gaming rig, once it's built, in here. So I'm going to take this shelf out and shunt all the games that way, or perhaps stand them on the floor. It might stop me putting rubbish on the floor. <clears throat> I've pulled out that Ethernet cable, because that one doesn't reach over here. And my uh, internet hub is up there. Uh, but then I actually found a better one when I was sorting cables out. There's Nemo, by the way. I got a road lamp a few days ago in the mail, and that's where the box is sat. He's been using it as his bed ever since. <clears throat> right. Uh, I can't remember what I came in here for now. Anywho. There it is. I've got the yellow Dorman Smith power lamp. Apparently this one's quite a late one. Apparently it's a 1990 one. So I've been told. I didn't realise they made them up until that date. Anyway. Um, that's new old stock. Apparently the marks on it are just from storage. But I quite well believe that because I've looked at the... Um, fuel tank and burner in there and they haven't been used once so probably has been uh, kicking around a warehouse or a barn somewhere never got used right oh yeah that's what I did I went into QDs earlier and bought a bunch of these tubs they were 149 each and the reason I bought them I bought a couple of deep ones because I've got is it that one no, I've got a bunch of random electrical bits and bobs in here. Connector blocks, battery packs, switches and things. Because you can put the lid on and then you can stack them nicely. And they're a lot stronger than cardboard boxes. Because um, I had a few bits and bobs stored in cardboard boxes and they just start to split. In fact, it's not there now, but I had a big box on top of this plastic one which is full of IDE ribbon cables for PCs well I actually took that box out grabbed two of these and I put like hard drive and DVD CD drive cables in one and floppy disk drives in another and once that was full I binned the rest of them because I thought I don't need all of them a lot of them were actually just crap dirty horrible looking things anyway I don't even know why I bothered keeping them um, so yeah, I've had a good clean out in here as well. That red box I need to go through. I've got a whole crap load of uh, CD and DVD drives for laptops in there. Most of them are IDE, so I might actually try putting a few small job lots together and eBaying them. Someone might want them that's interested in laptops. They've all been tested, they all work, so... I actually sat one day last year and actually went through the whole lot because I had a lot more than what I've got in there but not all of them worked so yeah they're the ones that passed the test um, <clears throat> yeah but I just thought with tubs like this I could find like a little shelf or a little cubby hole somewhere and just stack them nice and tidy on top of each other Especially as my chest of drawers has broken. Or even if I get a new chest of drawers, I could put the tubs in the chest of drawers and actually find things. All for the sake, you know, of 149 each. The deeper ones, like what I've got here, I just showed you with all the electrical bits and bobs in, they're 179 so they're a little bit more expensive, naturally, because there's a little bit more plastic. <laughs> <coughs> so, yeah, I can see me actually buying a load more of those. For some other bits and pieces. The question is, I don't know where to stack them. <laughs> uh, 
I'll find some way. Uh, oh, the TV I got from the car boot, I have tested it as far as plugging it in and pressing the power button. And it did turn on and, you know, the screen all lit up as it should and whatnot, and I could see the writing in the corner that told me what source it was, that was selected. Uh, but I've not actually connected a source to it, you know, I've not connected a DVD or a console or anything to it, so... But I want to tr try and use that as a monitor. That's the plan. I've got an HDMI cable somewhere in here. There. <laughs> I knew it was here somewhere. <clears throat> yeah, so, so far, so good. Right. I've also had a bit more of a sort out on there. I've got that shelf cleared of lamps. I've got these hung up out of the way, because they were piled up down there. I'm getting on my wick. I've just kept a selection of my favourite ones up on that shelf. Um, for now. I think eventually most of those will go out in the outside closet and on the shelves in there. And I've got a few more of my favourite and unusual ones up there as well. <clears throat> so there is basically all my vintage radios and cassette players, pretty much. Um, this one was fixed and working till I dropped it and broke it again. <laughs> so it's not working anymore. Um, I don't think the tuner's actually working. No, it's not. <laughs> I've got a broke bloody tuner again. One of these days I'll take that apart and see if I can get it going. But yeah, this is where I decided to put all my radios. I just thought having them up there. <clears throat> As some sort of display actually look quite nice and a bit more blink and organized in here uh. Uh. Ooh, pardon me that's quite a loud one. Ooh. Oh yes yeah, someone left a comment on my last video asking if I would do a review on these I had forgotten until now but as long as I don't forget I will <laughs> But, uh, unfortunately, I can be quite forgetful. <clears throat> Which drives me mad as much as it drives everyone else mad. Right. Yes, I've had quite a busy day. Oh, going back to the kitchen. I've got a couple of drawers in here. One's full of uh, PC-related cables, and one is full of, well, just random sort of audio cables like this and whatnot, audio and video cables. I've gone through, rolled them all up nice and tidily and used rubber bands to um, keep them there. So the drawers... I'll turn you around the other way. Are actually looking a lot more tidier and a lot more organised. See? Although I don't recommend using the rubber bands I was using, because most of them, well, I think at least half of them bloody snapped. And I think, just to make things a bit tidier in here as well, and in these tins. Ah. Actually, come to think of it, I'll get some more of them plastic tubs, put these cables in there. But I will get another pack of elastic bands as well, and just put around these and tidy them up. Because a uh, mess like that is just doing my crust in. I might actually get some more so I can actually throw all the RAM and everything in into one box. Mind you, I'm not sure that's going to be such a good idea. I've got a box there full of um, PC parts I could do with transferring to another box. I've got another one there. I've got all these um, I.O. plates, so yeah, I'm going to get some more various different boxes. Probably, probably not as big, as in as long and wide as these ones. They do do some, sort of like a third of the size of that, about a third of the length and a third of the width, but maybe the same height, maybe a little bit deeper. That will do for some of the um, fewer items that I've got through there. So I've got all the phones I want to keep in that one. I don't think I can do that with my flashlights though, because... No, I don't think that's going to work for flashlights. 
unfortunately, okay, voices outside. That's unusual. Mind you, it is Saturday night. I'm probably walking home from the pub. <clears throat> I have to say, over the last few recent years, I don't hear as many people walking back from the pubs, you know, on a Friday and Saturday night like I used to when I first moved in here ten years ago. You know, it used to get quite noisy. And you'd hear, you know, <laughs> all these drunk people shouting and screaming just because they're drunk. Not necessarily because they're pissed off with someone, but just because they're drunk. And you could, you'd hear them in groups walking home, but you don't really hear that much nowadays. Either that, or I've just gotten so used to it now that I just don't take no notice. I'm, I'm not sure. <clears throat> right, is that an empty one? That's an empty one. Is that an empty one? That's not an empty one, because I've got a wet hand. <laughs> Alright. <clears throat> well, if you're wondering where I got those tubs from, I got them from QD stores. I'm sure there was something else I was going to say. That's completely gone. Utterly gone. Okay, in the morning, it looks like it's just me and me, me and my brother going to the car boot. He doesn't think Mum wants to go. And I've not heard anything from Mum either. Normally when I don't go over, she'll ring me sort of like half eleven at night. Um, sometimes she doesn't, and tonight's one of those times, but I don't know. It don't bother me. I mean, I'll, you know, me and my brother can go. <clears throat> As a buyer, at least, if anything goes, you know, tits up with whatever you've purchased, you know you can get PayPal involved, and they usually go in the buyer's favour anyway. <clears throat> Which is why, when I've sold on eBay, if they ever, if the seller ever brings up a problem, I just refund. You know, without questions, without arguing, because at the end of the day, if I argue, they're going to open up a case and it's going to cause even more of a friggin' arse ache, and it goes against you as the seller as well, so, you know, even if the, um, the buyer is completely making it up. That is probably what frustrates me more. You really don't know if that buyer is actually legitimately telling the truth or if they're just pulling a fast one so they can get the money back as well as the item. You can't tell, can you? You, do, you really cannot tell. <clears throat> but, uh, you know, it's just less of a headache just to refund them. I know some sellers like to put up a fight, but I've tried in the past, but it really doesn't work. I mean, well, you know, 99.9% .9 of the time will always go in the buyer's favour. Well, that reminds me, I want to get some stuff listed this weekend by Monday, because if you list by Monday, and I heard this on the radio because I had that on today, it's a maximum of one pound selling fees per item. So they're not doing their percentage thing. I've got an offer on, you know, where it doesn't matter what it sells for, it's just a one pound selling fee. <clears throat> I think it's is it ten percent of the final value they take for the selling fee? Or was it twenty percent? Something like that. There's a percentage they take of the final value of whatever you sell. So even if you sold something for £20, you'd still only pay the £1 fee. Instead of whatever 20% of that would have been. Probably something really easy. I'm just hopeless at maths. Brain doesn't work when it comes to maths. It really Even simple maths, it just shuts the door and leaves me on my own. <clears throat> Touch the windies at the minute. That's what comes from drinking fizz. Oh. Turn it. <coughs> ah, shall I try that again? Turn those lights off now. 
Yeah, I don't need a one. Well, I think I'm going to just relax for an hour or so and put some music on through my headphones. It's at 12 and that's gone midnight, so if Mum was going to phone, she would have phoned by now. Usually by 11.45 at the latest. So what, I've, I've rambled on for like 15, 20 minutes now. <sighs> oh, actually, before I disappear, I think they're in here. I did get a few bits from the charity shops this week. Uh, I've got some PC games and I've got some PlayStation games. And I'm going to actually have a quick look through my collection before I go to bed tonight just to see if I've got these. Any games I've got, I'll take down to mum's and my brother can have them. Um, so, what did I get? For £1.50, I got Suzuki Racing. Pretty certain I do not have that one. Um, Need for Speed Carbon, and I've got a feeling that even if I've got this one, my brother's got it as well. I think he's got all of the Need for Speeds already. Call of Duty 2, uh, a big red one. World War II Tank Battles. I've actually got a feeling I may have this one, but not the Platinum version. This is Medal of Honor Frontline. But again, if I have, then I'll take that down and uh, give it to him. And Call of Duty 3 with Netplay. It'll be interesting to connect my Ethernet up to the PS2 and actually see if there's anything... <laughs> See if those um, net players still working. I doubt it, but oh, and I've got some PC games here as well that I also found. Medal of Honor Allied Assault. I've got all these Medal of Honor games and whatnot. I've not even played one of them. That's the other um, reason I want to get that XP gaming machine up and running. Anyway. Got a mystery case files one here, Ravenhurst. Real Crimes, the Unicorn Killer. Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon. I might have to just double check these, make sure I haven't gone. Medal of Honor, Pacific Assault. I also found a whole bunch of now that's what I call music CDs, but it looks like I actually had half of them again. So I think my brother and my mum might end up with these as well. Unfortunately, I had a had a handful that I could add in there, but yeah. I think what I'm actually going to do is write a list of the ones that I need. Not the ones I've got, the ones that I need. And put it in my wallet so when I'm out and about in the charity shops, I can check that list. And if I find one and it's not on the list, then I know I've already got it. Well, I suppose I could do it the other way, you know, and just write down the ones I've got. So if I pick one up and it's on the list, then I know I've already got it. <laughs> if it's not on the list, then I know I haven't got it, you know. I could do it either way. I suppose. But it would be nice just to fill all these gaps up. Anyway, I think I've rambled on enough, so I'm going to shut the camera down and... Uh, hopefully yeah, get this uploaded. Shut that light off. I don't need 20 lights on in the flat when I'm in one room. Oh, pardon me. Oh. Pillock, I went to grab my headphones. I don't want that bit, I want that bit. Right. I wouldn't mind changing my sound system. I mean, I've had this one working for years and I've actually fixed it multiple times. In fact, the bit that keep breaking is the volume control and I've fixed both ends of this actually not the end that plugs I can't remember if it's actually in the back of the PC or no it's in the back of the um, subwoofer I've not fixed that plug I've had to fix the one that connects to my switch box here because that switches between the external sound system and my headphones um, I've had to fix the connection there. In fact, I had to put a whole new plug on. There it is. Um, and then wires came out of this, and I had to re-solder those back on. Not 
you know, within quick concession of each other. It did take like a year or so, two, two, three years or something like that, before these wires broke. But yeah, I've actually had the subwoofer in use for quite some time now, but I'm thinking perhaps an upgrade to something that could have like various inputs um, still use the switch box of course so I can switch to my headphones when I want to use them but because I've got that PC over there well I will have I'm going to want to use audio on that so I'm sort of thinking maybe I could just a little amplifier or something and a set of speakers that would work but then I haven't got any shelf to put the little amplifier on I've got a little amplifier actually that I could use and I could connect these two existing speakers but I think I'll actually hold off on that until my subwoofer shits the bed completely um, I never turn it off either, it's always on anyway I'm rambling again so thanks a lot for watching everyone I will talk to you in the next video, bye